Hey everyone, Tio here. Welcome to another time lapse sketching tutorial. This sketch was actually created for a Skillshare course that I have made. If you guys want to draw the same thing, you can download the reference photo from the link in the video description below. So this is the Flinders Street Railway Station in Melbourne, Australia. It opened in 1854, so this is a very old building and it's a very beautiful building. So I'm starting this sketch with pen and ink straight away, drawing the main entrance first because that's the main subject. If I'm drawing this on location, that's how I would start as well. Always draw the main subject first, the most important part first. In case the weather changes, you can run for shelter, but at least you would have the most important part of the building drawn. This sketch was drawn really quickly. I took just 10 minutes to complete the pen and ink portion. So I start this sketch by drawing the main shape first and then divide the shape into different sections. That's why you see me draw those horizontal lines which are used to divide the building into different sections and then within those smaller sections, I can fill in the details. It's important to get the big shapes right, get the proportions right first before you draw the details. If you get the big shapes wrong or if you get the perspective wrong right at the start, all the details drawn later will be affected. For example, if you draw the front of the building too small, then the sides of the building will have to be drawn smaller in proportion to the front. And at the end of the sketch, you will notice you have a smaller sketch. So that's how the lines that you put right at the start of the sketch are very important. My lines are a bit wobbly and I kind of like them, <laughs> yeah. So with hand-drawn sketches, they have the charm because sometimes due to the wobbly lines. And to make a sketch like this doesn't take too much time. So this can be a sketch that you can complete on location really quickly. The time consuming part is actually the the painting uh, when you add watercolor. So that's very time consuming because you have to wait for the watercolor to dry. So as you can see, I'm building this sketch bit by bit, drawing the front first, then move to the left side, and then I'll move to the right side of the building. I'm right-handed. I could have drawn starting from the left side, but it's easier for me to draw the main entrance first. I hope that's the main entrance to draw the front of the building first before moving to the left. I've already allocated space on the left side for the left side of the building. The perspective for this building isn't that difficult because most of the building is actually facing the front. So you can draw the flat sides very easily. The walls on the right side are also not that difficult because um, you just have to draw the extreme right edge of the wall, the one where you see the tower coming up. Just draw that extreme right edge first, and then you can join the diagonal lines uh, from the main building to the extreme right edge. I've already visualized where that right edge is, that vertical line that you saw me draw earlier. So once I've visualized where that is, I can just draw the top diagonal line going towards that direction very easily. For this scene, you don't actually need to use the horizon line or the vanishing point. By the way, the horizon line is the line, I mean, if you take a look at the photo, it's the line where all the lines in the photo are horizontal. So it's slightly above the first story, the ground level, slightly above the height of the car. If I'm looking at the photo correctly. So now I'm drawing the power lines that are hanging over the street. I like these power lines because 
they create this nice sense of depth and also this overlapping effect so when you have things that overlap it will create this sense of depth if you take a look at the car on the right side it actually overlaps the building so we can tell the car is in front of the building and this creates this foreground and background element which will give your sketch more depth of feel more form more physical form for the people on the street i'm just drawing them with uh, squiggly lines the most important thing about drawing people on the street is make sure that um, in this case they should be of the same height because they are all so far away now the people on the street will be affected by the horizon line so that's perhaps where the horizon line will be most useful so this is the completed sketch drawn really quickly um, I kind of like it it's not complete um, not complete in the sense that I did not draw the details for the windows on the right side for the skyscrapers or office buildings in the background I don't have windows for them as well so you don't actually need to like draw all the details uh, if you don't want to because a sketch is just an interpretation uh, in this case of the scene I may not draw the windows with pen and ink but I will certainly uh, suggest those uh, windows with watercolor I find that when I draw windows uh, for example if I draw a rectangle for the window and when I paint over the window or the windows the outlines will be lost so I might as well not draw those outlines in the first place and when you are drawing buildings sometimes there can be a lot of windows so if you don't draw the windows you can actually save like a lot of time now for the skyscraper or the office buildings in the background I certainly don't draw the windows those windows are usually aligned uh, in the pattern for example if you take a look at the tallest skyscraper the one just right behind the dome the windows are actually aligned I mean the pattern of the window is actually horizontal so you can just paint those windows horizontally for the office buildings on the left side the windows are, I mean you can see the individual windows so in this case I would suggest those windows using tiny depths of watercolor sometimes when you add too much details it can make the scene look unnecessarily busy one way to practice simplification is to draw the scene on a really small piece of paper this will force you to simplify this will force you to draw only the lines that are important the other way is to draw with a blunt pencil or a pen with a very thick line the fountain pen that I'm using by the way is the Pelican M200 with sketch ink which is waterproof when dry so the sketch itself I mean the pen and ink portion took 10 minutes but the watercolor section took maybe 30 to 45 minutes I'm not too sure but the watercolor definitely took much longer because I had to wait for the first layer to dry before I paint the second layer so here you see me add the red on top of the orange the red in this case is transparent pyro orange from Daniel Smith the pigment code is PO71 so it's considered an orange however it's very warm to the extent that it looks like red and I really love this color I use this color as a red for the yellow if I remember correctly uh, it's azo yellow the other yellow that I use very often is Hansa yellow medium but for this small palette I have azo yellow so here I'm painting the shadows mixed with cobalt blue deep and burnt sienna I also have thalo blue in this palette thalo blue is used to mix really dark colors um, colors like black I mix thalo blue with transparent pyro orange to get black sometimes you may want to use black to create contrast cobalt blue deep is a color or paint with low tinting strength 
So if you want to create a very dark mixture, you have to use a lot of cobalt blue deep. And I love the granulation of that color, that paint. You see very lovely granulation on the ground and also for the dome of the railway station. Those windows on the right side of the building were painted with depths of black. The windows in real life are actually much smaller. However, my depths of watercolor are much larger. These are the two side banners, advertising banners in front of the railway station. And there is some gray at the bottom. Now most people actually, I mean most artists actually paint the clouds first. I'm not sure why I uh, paint the clouds <laughs> later on. Perhaps it's because I feel like the white paper uh, is too glaring. So here I'm adding details with the Posca marker. All those details are easier to add with Posca markers rather than watercolor. If you want to use watercolor to create those details, you can, but it's very difficult to draw or paint such thin lines like this. And also you will need to use a very opaque paint to paint over uh, dark areas. For example, earlier on I was using the orange or the yellow marker to draw over the black if you use watercolor, uh, watercolor is transparent, it's not going to work well. So you need something that is truly opaque. And I find that Posca markers work extremely well when it comes to adding details. So right now I'm adding the shadows for the building to basically uh, give this building more form. The shadows were mixed with cobalt blue dip and burnt sienna. It can be quite scary to add shadows, but um, sometimes you just have to go with it. Just uh, paint over your very vibrant, colorful colors and hope for the best. There are some cast shadows on the side of the wall here, probably cast by some tall building on the right side of the railway station, which is not shown in the photograph. And now I'm suggesting the people in front of the station with postcard markers. I would love to visit Melbourne again. The last time I was there, I drove on the Great Ocean Road, which is such a beautiful stretch of road. My fondest memory of Melbourne is me and my wife eating this big cup of mussels from this store called The Mussel Pot located at Queen Victoria Market on a cold rainy day. I remember all this because I sketched the market. So here's a close look at the sketch. You can see the beautiful granulation of cobalt blue deep against the cold press watercolor paper. This sketchbook is the Etcher sketchbook and it works quite well with pen, ink and watercolor. And here's the right side of the building. I really love the tower on the right side, how the light hits the side. Alright, thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye!